London Bridge, oh boy. There they are. Thorkel. Hmm, interesting. スベンオに勝ち目ありと踏んだから電幕軍についたんだ。俺は金じゃ戦はしねえ。殺しが好きなんだ。頼もしいぜ、ピョール。この手ムズが浅いを抑えれや、ベセックス内陸への補給船も通
don't want to get hit by that, man. He's a man mountain, man. Oh, yeah. We'll knock you out cold. Face plant you. Uncle. <laughs> He's enjoying this, isn't he? Challenge. Yeah, this was not going to be easy. Oh my god. That's going to be a few broken bones. Great shot again. Oh. Surely that's the most amount of damage anyone's done against Thorkel, right? He'll be impressed by this. The warrior spirit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see the things he respects. Is he gonna say it? Okay. トルズのか。トルフィンだ。うん?トルズ。お、おい、そのトルフィン。いやいや。ああ、ノー。おい。選手トルフィンよい。楽しかったな。またやろうな。約束だぞ。Wow. Wow. Love the facial animation there. Really detailed. Six months, that's a long time, man. Oh. Yeah, Lord Ragnar. He is about to do it. Oshikoyo Loki's always watching, isn't he? Go on, I want to hear Knut, man. Give me a quick glimpse at least. Say something, come on. Bring him out, bring him out. Oh. Thorfinn? Stunning, man. Come on, this is... <laughs> the ghost. Yeah, he took a lot of damage. Oh. Unreal, man. Unreal. Look at this. Oh, but maybe he could pop it back in. Maybe Bjorn showed him how. Yeah. As expected, that did a lot of damage, man. Bakayaro. <laughs> Heard that before. I like him, man. I really like him. He is, at this point, yes. There you go. Mm. 
Wow. <laughs> it happens, Thorfinn. Sooner or later, you always run into a match or someone that's just bigger and better. And he really enjoys it, doesn't he? Okay, so that ending, I mean, that right there might be one of the most important uh, moments of the series, of this character arc, essentially Thorfinn's character arc, that is, uh, you see a disillusioned, right? You, you see a disillusioned Thorfinn, a jaded, uh, a dejected Thorfinn, you know, injured Thorfinn, you know, broken Thorfinn, <laughs> be it physically and mentally. He's certainly broken physically, that's for sure, right? Um, you know, this is the harsh reality. This is the harsh reality. And the really interesting thing here is that, you know, he realizes this. Right, that's why I think this is so important. Uh, now, you know, it, you know, I don't think it, I don't think this is the exact moment he realized this because he's been doing this for years now. But you know, it's um, really interesting and it's great to see this depicted on screen. Right after having such a insane run in, right, a near death experience almost. <laughs> we'll get into that near death experience and uh, you know the person on the opposing end. You see that Thorfinn is quite baffled and quite repulsed by the excitement on display here. Right, he calls him madman. And, you know, of course, that also includes uh, Thorkel, who's actually a relative of his, but he doesn't even know it. But you see that, you know, this notion of uh, war being fun or combat being exciting, uh, death being exciting. You know, that one guy saying, I'm going to kill as many as I can, I believe, right? And Thorfinn's hearing all of this as he's marching on, uh, just barely, right? He's hanging in there. Um, and, you know, there's an interesting moment as uh, Askeladd asked him, you know, what's your next move? And of course, you know, Askeladd knows uh, Thorfinn is not going to stay behind. You know, he is going to fall in line and he is going to follow. Um, he knows. Uh, though there's also this moment of a bit of a proud dad moment almost, isn't there? Um, uh, you know, the tenacity. Like, you see that he appreciates his tenacity in that moment. You know, his fight in that moment. Even being so injured, right? He is certainly messed up at that point. Badly, right? Yeah, you know, he falls in line and he's like, no, I'm, I'm coming. You know, I'm coming. Um, you know, if you're going there, I'm going there. <sighs> as simple as that for Thorfinn at this moment in time. And, you know, that kind of ties back into uh, the reluctant nature of this, right? It's clear now, you know, they've shown us that, okay, he, this is not something he's excited for. This is not something that brings him enjoyment. But, you know, he does it, right? Um, because there's something else tying him to this. Uh, and of course, that's Askeladd and, you know, that notion of vengeance for his late father, right? Uh, there's this great line of dialogue earlier, you know, I'll carve out your heart and offer it to the spirit of my dead father. Oof. <laughs> How about that? But yeah, you know, um, you see that the attitude he's seeing on display here is kind of similar to the attitude he used to have as a young child back in his uh, village, in his hometown, right? Um, as a young um, person or a child, essentially. You know, he had these great notions of, um, you know, war and combat and battle, the glory of battle, essentially, right? Um, he had these fantasies, essentially. But then skip to this point, he's been experiencing it for years at this point, and it's clear, and they certainly made it clear at the, at the conclusion of that episode that, yeah, you know, this is a hellish experience for him, uh, as it should be, really. Uh, and, you know, he, there's no enjoyment there for him. You know, his reasoning is different. Uh, it's not tied to the glory of war or, you know, the excitement of combat and killing as many as you can, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's certainly not his uh, motivation here. Uh, so, of course, you know, he's faced the harsh reality now. He does not see eye to eye with any of these people, right? He, he feels like an outlier here. Uh, and, you know, it's good to see that. It is good to see that, you know, that they're finally showing this side of it, a glimpse of it, you know? Um, he's, he certainly doesn't share their enthusiasm for this. Uh, for the killing and everything else that comes with the killing. Uh, you know, be it pillaging and raping and all of that, right? Um, yeah, you know, so I do think this is a crucial moment of revelation, perhaps. But in the structural sense, this is kind of like him being caught between the lie and the truth, right? A divided person at this moment in time. Uh, there's a long road ahead still, but good signs. I mean, yes, you know, I've long maintained that, you know, sooner or later he is going to, you know, come around and understand uh, his father's teachings, 
right? Um, and, you know, his stance, uh, his pacifist stance. Um, and, you know, there's a glimpse of that in the last episode as, you know, he has this vision moment, this dream of his father essentially saying, you know, you'll, you'll understand it on your own, right? Through your own experiences. So yeah, it was great to actually get a glimpse of some of his inner character and his inner thoughts, right? Uh, because up until this point, or recently at least in the last few episodes, you know, grown-up Thorfinn's just been this ghost essentially, you know, like I called him during this episode. That's how he appears almost, you know, keeps his cards really close to his chest. Uh, every now and then he does, you know, get agitated. Uh, he gets triggered every now and then by Askeladd. But yeah, other than that, you know, you don't really get to see or hear about his thoughts much. And hopefully in the next few episodes, it starts going into a bit of a character focus. And, you know, not just for Thorfinn, for a lot of these other really interesting characters that are set up. Of course, King Canute or Prince Canute at this point, I can see... Um, I could see that being a really interesting aspect of this story, right? Uh, you could really do a character focus on that, right? Because the exciting aspect is that this is him in his days as prince, right? So his journey is also kind of just beginning. So I think there's a lot of fantastic opportunity there. You know, they're really teasing here. Uh, they've shown me Prince Canute twice. Uh, so, you know, hopefully in the next episode, I start actually going into the mind of this character, right? I don't mind the battle focus, and this one certainly had a really impressive battle or a fight sequence. Uh, you know, Thor, uh, Thorfinn and Thorkel, wow, wow, most impressive, most impressive. But, you know, like I've said before, I kind of gravitate towards more of the character focus. Um, so yeah, you know, the... The opening is there for a, a fantastic character focus uh, in uh, Prince Canute, right? As he begins his journey and you see that Swen, King Swen, is certainly putting him in a position uh, that is going to, you know, require Prince Canute to think outside of the box, right? And of course, you know, uh, there's two angles to this. You know, on one end, he's saying, uh, I'm speaking of the king now, uh, uh, Canute's father, he's saying that, you know, he's kind of gone soft because of his sheltered upbringing. Um, and of course, you know, perhaps because of some of the teachings of the church. So, you know, in that sense, you kind of see the king's take on uh, the church and religion and uh, the role it has to play uh, in the growth of his own son, uh, uh, someone of station, essentially, uh, or someone of this station, right? Uh, but, you know, that being said, like I mentioned, I do know about King Canute. Again, you know, I should specify that I don't know a detailed you know, I don't know every single detail, you know, this is his next move, then he does this, then he does that. I know, in the grand scheme of things, I know about King Canute and that he accomplished quite a bit, right? Uh, but I do know that, you know, the church um, certainly played uh, an important part uh, for King Canute. Essentially, he thinks his son, you know, Prince Canute needs real world experience at this point. But you see that Lord Ragnar, uh, who was certainly, apparently in charge of uh, Prince Canute, right? Uh, he kind of opposes the king, <laughs> at every chance he gets, essentially. Um, because, of course, you know, he's kind of trying to, you know, protect Prince Canute uh, from the harsh realities of the world, uh, at least at this point, right? Because he thinks he's not ready for it. Um, or for the harsh realities of, um, you know, war. But, yeah, you know, um, the king tells him that, you know, you kind of, this is kind of because of you, right? Uh, because of the treatment, special treatment, essentially. Um, so yeah, let's see how that plays out and uh, Lord Ragnar's role in all of this in Prince Canute's uh, growth as a character here. Um, or the role he plays uh, from this point on. But you know, on the other side of this, uh, uh, of this privileged, sheltered uh, upbringing, uh, you know, educated upbringing, in that sense, of course, you know, that's going to play a part here, big part. Um, to his advantage. And that's the reason I'm so excited to see a character focus on Prince Canute or Canute right? Uh, yeah, at this point, that's one of the most exciting prospects of the story, for sure. Uh, you've been taking a deep dive into this character arc. Uh, hopefully it's soon. Ho hopefully he starts going into that soon. Hopefully next episode, or if not next episode, the episode after that. Now, you know, even though Thorfinn is kind of really disillusioned here, let me jump to someone who really appreciated his efforts, right? His warrior spirit. Uh, and that is Thorkel. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Great, great episode for this character, man. Um, you know, he also adds this comedic element to it, doesn't he? And I love it. I really do. I really enjoyed Thorkel in this episode uh, and his disposition. Uh, I mean, 
here you have someone who is the, the purest of pure warriors you're ever going to find out here, right? This man does not fight for money. You know, Floki offered him double, yet he declined, right? And it was clear that he's going to decline because you see this man appreciates the spirit of the battle, of the uh, of combat so much that, you know, those kind of things don't matter to him. And he could tell, right? He noticed that Thorfinn is also fighting for something else other than money, right? And glory. Uh, he sensed that warrior spirit within him. And, you know, he was impressed by that. Uh, he was impressed by this uh, young fighter uh, who is actually a relative, right? Because let's let's go through this real quick. So they, you know, so they established that the the leader of the Yom's Vikings is Helga's father. Thor uh, Thorkel is that leader's brother, making him Helga's uncle. So that makes him Thorfinn's great uncle, essentially, right? So there's a relation there. And, you know, there's a really funny moment as, you know, he's just kind of saying, oh, let Uncle Thorkel, you know, do something. I can't remember the exact line of dialogue, but, you know, he drops that um, just in the moment, right? So he doesn't even know it, but he's actually related to this uh, warrior that he's so impressed by, right? You know, again, there is a glimpse of it. Uh, as Thorfinn mentioned, you know, son of Thor's, uh, that certainly caught his attention, uh, Thorkel, that is. Uh, and before he could, you know, get confirmation out of him, Thorfinn fell over and he's gone, right? So let's see if that kind of plays a part here. Like if he does kind of go back into that notion of, oh, okay, this could be Thor's son, right? Um, so, or Helga's son, right? Uh, that's a closer uh, relation here. Um, so yeah, let's see. Let's see if that plays a part. But he's certainly impressed by this individual, uh, by Thorfinn. So I think, yes, you know, I think it's probably fair to assume they are going to run into each other again. Right. Um, let's see if this next meeting is again a battle or you know something else maybe. Right. Um, because he is impressed by him. He wants to see him again. Right. He want he wanted him to live uh, to fight another day essentially. But how about that battle sequence? Uh, so impressive, really. Um, you know the dynamic camera angles, the fluid animation. Um, it really was quite uh, enjoyable and really again quite impressive. Um, and you know that that felt a bit different. You know, it felt like a standout sequence that, you know, that even more care was given to that fight sequence, right? And it showed, you know, it showed. Um, of course, you have two opposing fighting styles on display. This man, Mountain, and you see that one shot of him that, you know, he puts his hand on top of the guard's helmet. <laughs> that really shows you, you know, that really puts it into perspective, doesn't it? Um, so you'll have to let me know if this is, uh, again, you know, like I mentioned, I know that a lot of the stuff in here is accurate historically accurate, but you'll have to let me know if Thor Kell is actually based on someone who was meant to be this man mountain, essentially, right? Much larger than anyone else around him. I'm guessing he probably is. Um, so yeah, you'll have to let me know for sure though. Um, again, you know, it's a really likable character. And of course, you know, that really familiar uh, voice acting from the voice actor who plays Blackbeard. Um, so yeah, you know, like I said, I enjoyed that character reintroduction. Essentially, it is an introduction because I barely saw him in the first episode. Um, no, nothing, you know, nothing of substance in that first episode, right? Other than a few uh, moments. But here, you really get to know or learn about um, Thorkel the Tall. And I love how he's always kind of, you know, taking jabs or digs at uh, Floki or the king, you know, asking him about... Or you know, telling Floki to ask the king, you know, how it feels to always be fighting on the side you know is always going to win, right? Or the winning side, right? So you know, I, I really do enjoy this character. But let me switch back to the production side of things again. You know, this episode once again has its share of jaw-dropping frames. Really, uh, some stunning backgrounds, uh, some stunning, you know, visual storytelling and sequences or frames. Uh, oh my goodness, you know, so impressive. It kind of resumes that running theme, doesn't it? That was established all the way back in episode one, right? And it's it's been quite noticeable since it's depicting the beauty of the world, isn't it? Yet, you know, there is a lot of cruelty in that world. But another element of the production side, the score, you know, the, the incredible score, the original score of this anime. You know, I know I mention it every episode, but again, it has to be stated. It just, it just does you know, it is so engaging. It really is so engaging. You know, it immediately draws me in, you know, kind of grabs me by the scruff of the neck and pulls me right into the moment. It really does. Uh, and, you know, some of the battle themes uh, specifically have this really hypnotic rhythm to them. You know, I, I just find myself immediately just kind of zoned in and, you know, again, dialed in and feeling right in the moment. Um, it really gets me moving. It gets me moving, man. Uh, it kind of seeps in. 
you know, let me jump to one of my favorite parts of this anime or one of my favorite aspects of this anime. You know, it's a reoccurring thing at this point. And I'm speaking of Askeladd and Bjorn. Um, you know, they're one-on-one specifically, right? Uh, you know, it certainly serves as this expository tool and it is quite effective. It really is quite effective, right? Because it doesn't feel like it's too on the nose. And of course, it feels so natural because of uh, the dynamic that Askeladd and Bjorn have, right? Uh, you know, maybe Bjorn might not be as savvy as Askeladd. I mean, actually, no, I take that back. He is savvy, just not in the same manner as Askeladd, right? But of course, as uh, Askeladd's right-hand man, Bjorn is in a position that there is expectation uh, of Askeladd to explain his motives, his next moves, his decisions. But yeah, these two together as a pair, as a duo, it's such a wonderfully written uh, combo, right? Or uh, duo, sorry. Um, and, you know, like I mentioned, it serves as an expository tool as well. So, you know, it lets us, the audience, know uh, the motivations, uh, perhaps the direction the story is heading into. Um, you know, all that good stuff. It, it really is a fantastic use of it. And speaking of some of these motivations, he he mentioned that, you know, he sided with uh, Swen because he completely expects him to be the victor here, right? So, you know, there is a little something there. Uh, you know, at one point he's kind of, you know, uh, kind of running his hand or his fingers through his beard and like some of the hair comes out. I mean, you know, is that a sign of old age? Is that a sign of stress? Because it doesn't really seem particularly stressed, right? So maybe sign of old age, essentially. Um, though it is kind of, you know, uncommon for your beard hair to fall out like that just by stroking it. You know, there, also there was this notion I, I brought up in the last episode, you know, this notion of uh, there is a semblance of, you know, that he feels that maybe some of his past is catching up to him, right? Um, that that's that, that was a feeling I was getting in one of the scenes. And, you know, going back to something Askeladd said to Thorfinn in the beginning of the episode before he sends him out uh, to get Thor kills, uh, Thorkell's head, right? He said, a fight you cannot win becomes an obsession, right? Uh, I think, you know, there's a bit of subtle subtext there as well because you can certainly read quite, quite a bit, right? You can read quite a bit into that. Uh, even beyond just like a physical fight, right? That's applicable to so many things, uh, maybe to, to himself as well, right? Um, you know, that's the thing I brought up in the last episode that I, I want to learn more about Askeladd. So, you know, there's a lot of great subtext built in here. Um, like I mentioned, a lot of, you know, subtext built into the facial expressions. So the animation plays a uh, key part as well. But yeah, I think that's about it for this one. Uh, if you enjoyed that, consider dropping a like, consider dropping some comments, give me your thoughts. If you're interested in uh, early access to the next episode or maybe even full length to this episode, consider checking out patreon.com. The link is in the description and the pinned comment. But yeah, great episode, a really fun episode uh, for sure. But I do hope in the next few episodes it starts getting into some of the character focused stuff. Right then, that's about it for this one. Thank you for joining me and thank you for your time. And I hope to see you again soon for the next one. So until then, take it easy.